Well, to us, we're based in a city environment, so urban wildlife is really, really important to us. And what's the most green space that we've got in a city? It's gardens, really. So having those gardens as good for wildlife as possible really offers so many more opportunities in connecting little corridors for animals, providing space and providing a real mix of habitat in a, in a way that works alongside people. Star is a charity based at St Anne's Allotments, which is a site in the middle of the city in Nottingham, um, just bordering St Anne's and Mapley side of the city. It's a large space and, and Star manages four projects for different types of wildlife, community, gardening and heritage. We try and sneak in as much wildlife gardening as we can into those spaces to make sure that people can experience the outdoors, experience nature. So we're going to have a look at some of the different wildlife features that could easily be taken into any small community garden, small garden or any urban situation. So for wildlife gardening, the main things that we're interested in are things like providing food, shelter, nesting materials, hiding places and water. And that can be done in so many different ways. We can have lots of different wild spaces or we can be really organised about it or we can be really creative and make something that's really beautiful. It's really um, interesting to get creative and try and make something that works for you. So one of the first things to do um, to make your space wildlife friendly is to look at providing different types of food for wildlife. Being an allotment site, we love pollinators. So the different things you could do to provide um, food for pollinators is a wildflower meadow or it could be some lovely individual plants that are either wildflowers or the garden plants that you get. Looking for different types of flowers for different insects, some of them like long flowers, some of them like big flowers, different coloured flowers and the long season of flowering also. The other thing that we really like to do is to let some of our vegetables flower. So things like kale and onions are fantastic. If you just leave a few, let them flower, you go to seed at the same time and they can be great for pollinators. I also find it really interesting when we see butterflies and moths to see what their caterpillars eat and try and grow more of that as well, providing food for all the life stages. Fruit, berries, seeds and nuts are also a really good way of providing food. And that can be the fruit that you're familiar with growing fruit trees or having brambles growing through your hedges. Or you could grow some of the smaller trees like hawthorn, blackthorn, dog rose is really good. These will all flower through the summer and then have lovely berries on them in the autumn. One of the best um, shrubs we've got for wildlife here is in our hedges and that's hawthorn and it's great because it has early spring flowers that provide food for pollinators and then it carries on and has these beautiful red haws that provide berries for loads of birds and mammals. And don't forget a lot of your flowers will also turn into seeds which can be a really good source for birds particularly things like teasels and lots of other flowers will give you lots of autumn food for wildlife and of course you can provide supplementary food as well things like bird feeders a particular joy to have if it's somewhere you can watch it from too Providing water for wildlife is really important for so many different reasons. Um, one of the best ways and best known ways to do this is by ponds. Um, we absolutely love ponds here and we've got loads of them, all of different sizes and shapes and each pond is completely different in, in what visits it and what they use it for. We have lots of frogs and newts visiting our ponds and breeding in them. We also get lots of our honeybees. They go to the shallower areas and that's where they have little drinks of water. And ponds don't have to be big. They can be any size. You could have a mini pond, which is something like a washing up bowl or um, a barrel. And you can fill them with lovely, beautiful pond plants that look pretty in your garden. You could get even smaller and you could have a dish of water out on the floor for ground animals to drink from or a small pot of water with stones or pebbles in that insects and bees can drink from as well. Some things that are really important to remember when you have any source of water is to make sure there is a way of wildlife getting out of it. In a pond that might be something like a ramp of logs or bricks or we actually even put some strings and things in our water butts just in case the odd bee comes in for a drink and struggles to get out. 
The other thing that's really important to remember is trying to keep your water dishes and your bird baths clean so that there's no diseases that can be passed on between animal visitors. With ponds, it's really nice to have a mix of different plants in there as well, and you can get some gorgeous flowering pond plants. We also manage our ponds just by getting in there and pulling out as much of the overgrowth as possible. We do it once a year in autumn, usually around October, when things aren't breeding in there, but also there's not things perhaps overwintering at the bottom of the pond. And just get rid of all the stuff that's, the leaves that have fallen on it or the stuff that's grown, just so nothing falls in and rots. And that will help to keep a pond with open spaces and keep your plants quite nice and healthy as well. There are lots of different habitats you can fit into your community space. Um, we have a mix here of what we call woodland, wetland and grassland. So with woodland, we plant a lot of trees and a lot of those are native trees and they provide a lot of food opportunities, nesting opportunities, different heights of growth, different stuff for insects. One of our favourites is the hazel tree because that's got a long history with gardening as well. So we grow lots of hazel on a coppice and that's brilliant for insects. It's brilliant for, for creating hazelnuts, which generally the squirrels get. Um, and then it also produces lovely long sticks of wood that we can use as bean poles or as pea sticks, or we use them in hedge laying or for anything that we're building. And it's one that you really could have in any size garden. Um, if you were going to have one tree, that would be, that would be our favourite. When we manage woodlands, we have lots of different ways that we do that. So we might prune them, we might thin the trees a little bit, so remove some of the trees. But when we take that wood, we actually turn it into another habitat by making habitat piles. We'll have logs, sticks and twigs, and we'll put them together in different piles and we'll get fungi, we'll get insects, we'll get little mammals hiding at the bottom. So that's something that we, we do to manage our waste on here, but also it creates these lovely habitats. You can also make other piles from things that you might have lying around. So you might be able to make a pile out of the leaves on your lawns, put those into a corner and things like hedgehogs will often rustle around in them. You could also make a pile like a rockery or out of bricks, um, like this one here. In fact, we've put this one next to the pond because we want to give a place for things like amphibians to go in but all sorts of animals will use um, any sort of pile. You'll get lots of different things like insects, and then you'll get the birds coming to eat the insects, or maybe even for a bigger pile, going in there to nest. Another thing to look at in your wildlife garden is grassland. And that can be the grass itself. So you could let a patch of your lawn grow a bit longer. You might be amazed at the different types of grass that you've actually got. There'll be lots of different flowers that come up if you let your grass grow long. By being a bit longer, we're offering somewhere for things to hide, even nest, or you can have a wildflower meadow. And that doesn't need to be big. It could be big, or it could be a little corner of a sunny patch of your garden where you could put a few wildflower seeds. It offers a whole mix of opportunities for insects. There's usually quite a lot of different flowers in there that will offer food and shelter and hiding places for insects, um, and also places for small mammals and amphibians to hide. So the final section of habitat that you can have in your wildlife garden is wetland, which is ponds like we talked about earlier and all the different water features you can have in your garden, or maybe even a bit of a boggy section where you just have some different types of plants that really like to have water to live in. Another really great thing you can have in your community wildlife area is some actual wildlife features that people can get involved with looking at and maybe even get involved with building, either with volunteers or at an event. This could be all kinds of nest boxes. That could be bird boxes, bat boxes, hedgehog homes, um, or you could make um, a bug hotel made out of pallets on the ground or a bee hotel put up a little bit higher with loads of tubes and holes in it for solitary bees. The other thing that we've made is a hibernaculum, which is a great type of habitat where you just dig down um, into the ground and make a sort of hole where then you start building your habitat pile. And by being underground, it makes it even better um, for amphibians and mammals to hide in. There are lots of options of different wildlife habitats you can create in your space. So make it your own, but the key is variety. Just have as many different heights, as many different cool spots, warm spots, nooks and crannies, whatever works for you in your space, and that will bring in lots of wildlife. 
before you get started, it's a really good idea to make a bit of a plan in the round and start making a few initial ideas, rough layouts. So look at what space you've got, talk to your user groups, have a look at what plants you've already got, where it's sunny, where it's shady, what access issues there might be. You can make the most of the features and space you've already got, whether that be a building or a wall or a fence, you can use that, you can put nest boxes up on the what you've already got, or you can put in some vertical planting or some climbers and maybe jot down a few ideas either on paper or including everyone else in your group where you can. Just make sure too, there's ways of the wildlife getting in. That classic examples like hedgehog holes so that any animal can get in to enjoy your space. And finally really, just try and look after your wildlife space in line with nature. In our garden areas, we try and find alternatives to using pesticides as much as possible. Um, we try and use our own compost that we've made or buy peat-free compost. Those sorts of practices that, that look after the sustainability of your garden too. And don't forget, you're designing it for people and wildlife. So make sure there's space for you to sit, to enjoy what's around you, features that you can engage with. It's a place for you to enjoy nature. So there are loads of different things you can do in your space for wildlife. So pick a few that will work for you. You don't have to do everything at once and enjoy it as it's different every year. Every little thing you do will make a big difference.